Hello folks, Rudy here. I'm back on the internet and I'm going to help you guys understand what you're getting when you get a quote for uh, solar. So I've got a whole bunch of quotes in front of me right now from a whole bunch of um, New Brunswick solar companies or proclaiming to be New Brunswick solar companies. Um, and I want to pull the pants down on what's going on. So it can help you guys out there. It kind of makes me a little bit ugly because um, a lot of people don't know about solar in New Brunswick. And by sending people estimates, we're educating them on how things work, how net metering works and, and you know your paybacks and what to expect and whatnot. And I feel like our, our target audience are, are kind of naive and you know I half of my day is spent educating people on how it works and since there's there since our customers are naive um, I feel the need to protect them and show what is showing up on some estimates that I've got here in front of me so um, I'm going to start. I got a little notes here. It's hopefully, it doesn't take a huge amount of time. So, the first thing I want to talk about is unrealistic rate increases. Um, as you know, in the news, MB Power is trying to get. I think it's 14.6. Um, they're trying to get 14. Point, or so, so almost almost 15 percent increase this year, and it's a proposed increase. They're hoping for 20 percent over the next two years, so 10 percent per year. Now, a proposed rate doesn't mean you're going to get it. It has to go through what's called the EUB, which is Energy and Utilities Board. And it's basically a board that's put together to protect us from spikes and letting companies, even though they're Crown Corporation, to do whatever they want as far as rate changes. So they just kind of sit amongst the panel and say, oh, we've had all these storms and inflation's happened and the cost of our fuels have gone up. and and all this and then they try to justify the rate and we're five billion dollars in the hole so I get it I see both sides that said we get estimates um, from uh, so so everyone's interested in solar right it's great there's incentives out there we can get up to eight eight thousand dollars back in incentives we can borrow money for green energy stuff uh, ten over ten years up to forty thousand dollars interest-free cool um, but when you get an estimate from some of these companies, I I put a black marker over them because I don't want anyone getting a butt hurt over it. And so I've got a bunch here. When you get estimates from these companies, they, they give you a payback period. And here's one, for example. And you, they kind of write it out and they say, you know, this is, this is how much power you're going to save based on how much solar you have over X amount of years. So... This one here has a 10% increase. Let's see if I can make it happen here. Right there, 10% increase per year for the next 20 years. So what does that do? It makes the payback on solar look very tasty. And the reality is, if we go to Statistics Canada and we look over the last, say, 20 years, the average increase has been three 0.75% on average per year for the last 20 years. And that information is available to anybody, including these companies. So yes, there's a proposed 10% over the next two years. Will they get it? Maybe. Does that justify increasing it for the next 20? And it compounds too, right? Consider that. That's 10% on top of the last 10% on top of the last 10% increase. So it makes the payback look really good because it looks makes our power rate you know go up to 26 cents on year 16 per kilowatt hour where it's you know a little over a little under 13 right now so historically we haven't seen that um, we're basing quotes on uh, on um, I guess uh, proposed rate changes and just because it's over the first two years it doesn't mean it's going to be if they get it over the, it's not going to happen for the next 20. So you might get a solar quote from from this company, and I won't say who, but I, I actually took that picture. Um, and you might get one from another company, 
and they may have different paybacks on them. Um, and some might say, oh, your estimated savings is going to be 150000 over the next 30 years. And someone may be more realistic, you know, and might base it on the facts that the rates haven't increased that much. Um, and um, just more realistic. And anyways, keep that in mind. So I, this, this company that I just showed you is at 10%. Um, I've got another one here. Uh, seven and a half percent over the next uh, 30 years uh, keep in mind two and three quarters is what it's been over the last um, uh, 20 according to stats Canada New Brunswick so keep that in mind when you're looking at your quotes uh, let me see what else am I gonna talk about let's talk about DC optimizers uh, I know a lot of you don't know what a DC optimizer is but basically if you have if you have one roof we'll say and you have solar panels on it and it's facing the sun like this and you have another roof that's say facing this way or there's going to be some shading or whatnot then what can happen is one ray can drag down the other now if you're smart about it and i would say 85 percent 95 percent even homes don't need these dc optimizers if you add them on a house that just has a flat straight roof that just looks like that at the sun one pitch um, all your panels are facing the exact same direction at the same pitch some of these companies are putting DC optimizers on there and they have some pretty bold claims and I think I'm gonna put a video a YouTube video about that maybe in the it's kind of technical but um, I've used DC optimizers and I've used um, uh, AC uh, sorry, uh, microinverters and converted to AC on the roof because there's certain cases where it works. In almost all the cases, one of these companies, for example, is putting DC optimizers everywhere and claiming these big claims. And knowing what I know, if you do that on a flat roof where there's no shading, or it's not a flat roof, but a one single pitch roof, it's about an 80 year payback. To, and you added a whole bunch of points of failure to your system that you don't need to be there. Yes, you can monitor your panels at the panel level. It's unnecessary. It adds a whole lot of cost. The payback's about 80 years. It is a way that they can make money on each panel. It's kind of an upsell. And customers just don't know that. They just say, oh, well, this one doesn't have DC optimizers, and this one does. They are, in a lot of cases, we don't need them at all. I'm, I like string inverters. You can get four channels on a string inverter now. And if any, I know I'm talking above above a lot of your heads, but um, it's just the more affordable way to do it and more reliable as well. So, um, and, and it's only needed if you're on multiple roof planes. So keep an eye out for DC optimizers. Most of the time they don't pay for themselves and they add complex, complex um, more points of failure. Um, stupid amount of fees that's my next note section stupid amount of fees here we have oh I didn't mean to show the name on there we have a whole bunch of fees on here and this is from a company that is from Ontario and you can't quite see them but you have a site inspection $500 shipping and handling $500 residential engineering report $680 they're like three hundred dollars if you were to get a structural engineer to, to check stuff out. A residential electrical permit, three hundred and thirty-four dollars. This is starting to sound like a car dealership. Residential building permit, three hundred and fifty dollars. Interconnection fee, nine hundred and four dollars, and a bi-directional meter, two hundred and twenty dollars. There's no interconnection fee in New Brunswick. The building permit and, and residential they've got that list in two different things. It's $150, like that's what it costs for, and there's no bi-directional meter fee that does not exist either. Um, $150, and that should be on the cost, you know, rolled in with the um, with the estimate for the installer to take care of, including including the, uh, in the engineering report. So they've added all these admin fees and service fees and all this stuff, and there's absolutely no need of it. I know what kind of, profits are in these and these guys are just absolutely gouging you they do have the dollar per watt in the bottom and for what this is just terrible 
so um, it's a, it costs us like $150 to get um, a, a permit and that would be a net metering uh, application done in, in New Brunswick from MB Power. Um, okay, what else do I want to talk about? Okay, another one here that I have. It's a very large price again based on um, I really encourage everybody to shop around Sh get a whole bunch of different quotes and when you start talking about solar your phones are listening and guess what they're gonna start advertising to you and those marketing companies are very good at that um, some of these paybacks that you see on here um, are gonna show that you can zero your power bill if you're connected to the grid in New Brunswick, you can't zero, you cannot zero your power bill. You have a service fee that everyone has to pay, and I wrote it down here um, what it is, and it's missing, of course. But stand by. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got it right here, right from the MB Power website. So a service fee is a fee that you're going to pay just to be connected to the grid. And that includes like maintenance on the poles, tree cutting, just the cost of being hooked to the grid. $24.57 for the city folk, urban, because you guys are more densely put together and you have less trees. And for us rural folk, it's $26.96. And that's a pretty good deal, really, for the amount of, you think of the storms and all that, that these guys got to take care of. So if you're hooked to the grid, you cannot get away from that fee. Some of these companies are giving you an estimate and it's showing $0 power bill. You can get a $0 power bill if you're like this and you're running off grid. But guess who has to worry about the trees and stuff? This guy. So on these estimates, they're putting, they're, they're, they're zeroing your bill. Um, you're still going to pay tax on the power that you use. In New Brunswick, you can put the electricity back that you used the night before and you can zero that amount, but they're still going to charge you tax on the electrons that you consumed. You do not get the tax back from the electrons that you put back onto the grid. So it's possible to have a net zero at the end of the month or at the end of the year, but you still are going to have, a, a, it's usually a small tax bill based on the power that you used when it wasn't sunny, so nighttime, cloudy days, and you're also going to have your uh, service fee, which, and you could have your, uh, if you're renting a water tank, a uh, hot water heater, you'll have that, and you're going to have tax on your service fee, and you're going to have tax on your water heater, and if you have a dust to dawn light, you can't get rid of that. So on these estimates, they're showing $0 power bills. So how come these guys can get it down to $30 a month, and these guys can get it down to zero? It's just misinformation. Um, okay, let's talk about last thing, uh, the add-ons. So some of these guys are, have little add-ons on here. Here we have an Emporium Energy Monitor. I believe that MB Power should have one of these in every single house. You can add that on to your solar for $1,997. That exact same unit is on Amazon for under $200 and most people can install them themselves. So if that does not set a precedence on what's going on here and we're kind of trying to take advantage of our people who don't know, um, I'm just hoping that this video has some type of uh, effect on, on that. So there's a lot of companies popping up uh, and the reason is New Brunswick is ripe. We don't have solar because people don't know about it. And I'm kind of teaching a lot all day long. And I see a lot of companies popping up all over the place. Here's another one. And that's me on their website. Far out. <laughs> I don't remember being part of that company. Anyways, um, beware, folks. The uh, Just uh, thought I'd make this video and kind of, uh, like I said, pull the drawers down on, on some of the stuff that's going on. Um, do your homework, and I hope that you learn lots, and I hope you get good information and are not uh, taken advantage of. And if there's any questions, you can put it right in the comments of this video or ask someone who has solar. That's who I always tell people to talk to. Um, if you have someone to talk to you about solar, um, 
ask them, do you have solar in your house? Why don't you? I always ask people who call me from a call center and they'll try to sell you something. I'll say, do you have that credit card? And they'll say no. And I said, well, it can't be that good, is it? Anyways, um, do your homework. Uh, YouTube's an excellent resource. And I mean, there's a lot of stuff even, I mean, the runs are special, right? Every, every province has different rules. We, we don't have time-based billing yet. We are probably going to get it, but I don't think we should be quoting that to customers. I don't think we should be quoting 10% increases every year that compound themselves when it has not yet happened. When that happens, sure, let's put it on there and let's be realistic, folks. Um, does solar make sense for people? Most of the time it does. Um, some of the time it doesn't. And um, anyway, there's no need to inflate numbers. There's a huge market out there. And I hope that uh, we don't put a black mark on the industry by, you know, going full blown car dealer on this stuff. Anyway, that's all I have to say this evening. Have a lovely night. I'm not done yet. What are you really looking for on a solar quote? You should be looking at production numbers, which should all be relatively the same. So how many solar panels got put up? And if they're sizing their inverters correctly, um, string inverters uh, versus um, a, uh, micro inverters versus DC optimizers, it's gonna be a little bit of difference. It's gonna be a cost difference. Take those, compare them, compare them with the price. A string inverter is gonna be cheaper than micro inverters and it's gonna be cheaper than um, DC optimizers with a string inverter. Look at the production numbers. Um, most of the software that we're using, we're, we're either using, I use Open Solar. Um, a lot of people use Open Solar, it's very customizable. Aurora and Solar Graph. And uh, the production numbers are uh, set in a lot of these. So look at how many panels you get how many kilowatt hours you get per year, and then the cost. And a lot of them are hard to find out what the actual cost is because they're rolling the incentives on top of it and they're not quite showing that. Um, but there should be like a dollar per watt. It's just how a lot of us price the jobs. Um, we've just been at it so long we know what things are gonna cost and based on the size of the job and whatnot. So look at your production number and um, the payback is gonna be different on each one because of the way that they profile it with their optimistic or pessimistic um, rate increases. Um, another thing that I noticed on some of them, some of them have like a savings of a hundred thousand um, dollars, and what that is, it doesn't it doesn't include the cost of the system. So I've got one estimate here. It says a hundred and one thousand dollars savings over the life of the system. That's true, but the system costs forty four thousand dollars. At 388 and so your actual savings are 56 uh, thousand seven hundred twenty four and some estimates might show that number instead of you know the the um, difference uh, or the or, or it won't some will show the difference and some won't take into account this the system so they're very sneaky and just be careful um, I had something else I wanted to say but we'll have to get it next time it's a really long video and you guys are really good for sticking around